So I came across this in a series of comments I got. Um, I, I've done a handful of videos like in defense of, of The Last of Us Part Two, and discussing like the story, discussing um, some of the broader design decisions, the pacing, all sorts of stuff. Inevitably, when you talk about The Last of Us, Neil Druckmann comes up. People are like, oh, he ruined the series. He retconned a bunch of stuff. He rewrote the story to try and alter how the Fireflies were perceived and all of this stuff. And what was interesting is that people started bringing up a recording. It's, it's one of the common points that they point to uh, is that they say that there was a recording at the end of The Last of Us, the original game, that had a surgeon describing how there were multiple attempts at making a cure with a bunch of different patients that were potentially also immune, just like Ellie, and they didn't work, which made Joel's decision much easier to make to save Ellie and kill who would end up being Abby's father. So it was supposed to make it originally in the game easy for you to just waltz in and feel justified in saving Ellie um, and less of a moral conundrum, right? Whereas the way that they these people say it's been retconned is that Neil Druckmann went in, removed a recording from the game, cut it out of The Last of Us Part 1, and they went in it with a patch and took it out of the original game and the remaster as well, so that now that recording isn't there, and now the Fireflies seems like they could actually have made a vaccine, made a cure for the infection uh, or for the cordyceps fungus, and they couldn't because Joel did this thing selfishly. So they retconned the story, took that recording out to make it seem uh, like more of a moral conundrum and make Joel seem like potentially more of a bad guy. And people have talked about this recording for years. People have brought it up constantly. I remember in my original like commentary video on The Last of Us it coming up, I remember discussing it a long time ago. People are always bringing up this recording that Neil uh, had cut from the game. And what's interesting, it's not true. <laughs> like Exactly. Like uh, Aaron uh, sees where I'm going. This is not true. This recording was never actually in the game. But these posts from years ago act as if it was just a matter of fact. Like this, this post from four years ago, this was May 28th, 2020. So even before The Last of Us Part Two launched, because that launched in June, I believe. So before The Last of Us Part Two had even launched, this person searching for the surgeon recording. I've come across many different people remembering that there was a second surgeon's recording found somewhere in the hospital section of the game at the very end. One mentioned it was a support surgeon, female, with different opinion on the whole surgery situation. It supposedly mentioned previous attempts on making a cure and 11 or 12 patients that were immune, just like Ellie. The recording was supposedly removed in an early patch to make Joel's decision a bigger moral dilemma. I'm looking for more information about it, searching for the transcripts. And I found other posts, even from like a year ago. Uh, so, okay, please tell me I'm not crazy. I bought and played the game the moment it was released, and I'm like a million percent sure that there was a recording in the hospital that said they have found many more immune patients and that they killed all of them without results. And like after that recording, Joel's decision was to me like obvious and right. But then the recording got removed from the game and I couldn't find it the second time I played. Please tell me I'm not crazy. It was there for real. I'm searching for the info on it on the internet, but can't find anything. I remember after I couldn't find the recording on my second playthrough that I found the info that it was deleted on purpose to make it more morally challenging. Please tell me I'm not crazy. Other people have brought it up too. I remember there being an audio recording. It's not true. This is an example of a Mandela effect, which is trippy. The Mandela effect is a type of false memory that occurs when many different people incorrectly remember the same thing. It refers to a widespread false memory that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s. Memories are not always precise recordings of events. And so what are these pictures? Oh yeah, like misremembering whether the Monopoly man had a uh, monocle or not, whether he, uh, the Oscar Meyer was EY or AY, whether Pikachu had the black tip on his tail or not. So like little bitty misrememberings that get compounded by lots of people repeating it, okay? What's fascinating about this in the context of The Last of Us is that what seems happened is that early on in the lifetime of The Last of Us part one, the original game, people played the game and there there was this one transcript. Um, this is an actual discussion uh, of the, the actual recording. This is what it actually says. It's a little vague, but they don't discuss uh, or they don't say that they tested 11 to 12 other immune people and 
weren't successful and they'll try Ellie now, I guess. That never happened. And what seems, I, I would love to know where it started because it seems like there was potentially like a, maybe a YouTuber or a streamer or somebody with a, a larger platform made some videos back in like maybe 2013 or 2014 discussing like how how this was maybe removed from the game because they thought they remembered maybe seeing that recording and they can't find it in the game now so maybe they patched it and removed it and then that got copied and somebody said it to somebody else and then it was posted to the reddit and then people started repeating it over and over and over again and then you hear other people bring it up and who knows maybe back in the day like i mentioned this because here's the thing i remember also i have this false memory where i could have sworn that there was a recording where they talked about ellie being another one of the immune that they've tested uh, and that they're going to try to to extract a, a cure from, even though it's not in the game. Like, it's, it's just not there, and it never was. And it's fascinating because I have this false memory as well where I could have sworn this was here, but it is verifiably something that I picked up by hearing other people discuss the game or by us chatting about it or, or whatever. Like I picked it up somewhere and just accepted it as like, yeah, I think I remember that in the game. And then I heard it reaffirmed time and time again to the point where now it to me is like, I could have sworn that was in the game, but it's just not, it's just not, it never was, but it's a constructed memory. And I find it fascinating because I still see people, like I said at the top, bringing this up in discussions about The Last of Us Part Two, And they're like, oh, yeah, no, uh, Neil Druckmann was so desperate, so desperate to find a way to make Joel look like the bad guy that he he patched things out of the original game to make the decision more morally confusing and more difficult. Um, so he changed the story to make Joel look worse. And it's not... It's just not a thing. Yeah, Joel lies about it, which is perhaps where it's doubled down and where the the confusion compounds. But it wasn't in the game. It wasn't in the game. What proves that it was never there? Because people have original 2013 copies of The Last of Us that have never been patched, never been updated. And you can put that disc into a PlayStation 3, disconnect it from the internet and play it. And it's not there. It just isn't. There was never a recording there. But people have constructed this memory that it was there, which is fascinating. It's so fascinating. You know, isn't it trippy? It's really, really weird. So maybe in the show, you know, they go back and everybody shares this collective delusion. But it just goes to show you, like, this Mandela effect is a, a phenomenon that human beings experience. And it's it's really interesting. It's really, really weird. But it's something that does, in fact, occur. Yeah, the Mandela effect is truly a mystifying phenomenon. It shows you how group delusion and group deception can occur. Uh, and it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's a little stuff like this. Or like if you ever watched the um, like The Office. Do you remember The Office? Do you remember uh, the episode where they're like, does Stanley have a mustache or not? And then all of a sudden everybody starts like freaking out trying to figure out, wait, does Stanley have a mustache? Or does he not? And everybody starts to try to figure it out. And like, uh, <laughs> yeah. And everybody's impressions start to separate and, and build off of each other's. And it's a similar thing that happens with, yeah, a popular one is Luke, I am your father. When Vader actually says, no, I am your father. Exactly. Everybody's like, I could have sworn Luke, I am your father is in Star Wars, but it's not. That's not the line. Exactly. People also do it with, uh, I forget the line in Lord of the Rings. They do it there. It happens all the time. And it's why like when a crime is committed, they will separate witnesses because when uh, this happened in a case that I've been following for since it happened, like seven years ago, the the Delphi murders, which is an insane case in its own right. But in that case, there's all these people that have seen one person walking on this trail and they had to separate the witnesses because if all the witnesses collect, they'll talk. Oh, wasn't he wearing wasn't he wearing uh, like black jeans and a blue shirt? And they're like, no, it was blue jeans and a black shirt. OK. Oh, yeah, that is what he was wearing. When they had it right the first time, but their their perception was changed after the fact. Similar things have happened with like, I just watched a documentary on this case too, the Peterson case with like Lacey Peterson and Scott Peterson. He, Scott Peterson, murdered his wife and unborn child. Real class act, this guy. Um, and after, after that happened, 
her face was plastered everywhere. Like there were posters for her missing everywhere, all over the place, uh, describing what she was wearing when she went missing and where she was. She was walking her dog and stuff. And what they what happened is that in the weeks afterwards, people would call in tips to the police saying that they saw her in that outfit with her golden retrievers, with that dog in the place that she was supposed to be at this time. And they could prove verifiably without doubt that those people were mistaken, that those people were wrong because they could demonstrate note when they found her body, she was wearing a different outfit or a note that outfit or that at that time period that they were talking about, she could not have physically walked that far to get there in time because we know for a fact she was at this location at this time and so she couldn't have gotten there. And this happens all the time in criminal cases, especially where people will construct memories because after the fact, they might have seen somebody with a dog, but then they see on the news that there was this person that went missing and this happened and that happened. And so they start to reconstruct the memory and inform it with that altered uh, perception of what it actually was. It's really, really interesting. But the Mandela effect is a real thing. It doesn't just happen in true crime cases. It also happens in discussions about video games like The Last of Us, where we have this idea that, no, for sure, this recording was in the game and they patched it out to make it easier, I guess, to relate to Abby. And it just ended up not being real. It was just not true. So I found that really interesting. And I thought it was... Uh, something kind of cool. So I figured, I figured I'd mention it. <laughs> he took my thing.